All right. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Hey, absolutely. We'll get started where everyone else does. Okay. <coughs> I just had a bagel. Still stuck in my mouth. That's not where we usually start. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So, earliest childhood memories. What are we getting into? Um, grew up in Kentucky. Okay. Earliest childhood memories. Um, I would say probably running around in the woods. Yeah. Like yeah. by yourself? Just with my general? brothers. Okay. Yeah. With okay. my brothers. Yeah. But lots of time, uh, spending in the woods. Lots. Is this like right outside your backyard? Give me like, paint me a picture. Here. So grew up on like 75 acres. Okay. In Kentucky. Um, 75. That's a lot. Yeah, it was a it was a decent amount, but like close to the house. I mean, there was a lot more. Yeah, so grew up pretty uh, pretty rural. Uh, not too many neighbors around okay. the house. Um, so yeah. So lots what, of, what 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 is that seventy five acres? Is it mainly farms, mainly woods? woods? Okay, mainly woods. So you got a couple creeks that run through it. Uh, mainly hardwoods. So what are we like? It, what's does your family have a farm or they're just like, we, I like land? Yeah, it's more land. Okay. Just land. Yeah, my grandma, she uh, and grandpa, they lived about uh, half a mile away from us down the road. Okay. And they had about 100 acres uh, on their on their land as well. Did they property. also just like land for the fun? So they, they, um, they had a Christmas tree farm. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, when my grandpa bought that property. Yeah. That was his uh, his kind of vision, and uh, he had my grandpa had three kids mm-hmm. with my grandma, and um, yeah, my dad was the oldest, and that's what he would do. Like every weekend, was go out with his dad, and yeah. my grandpa, and clear clear the land and take the woods and make them into fields, and then they would plant Christmas trees. I feel like that's a great <clears throat> farming industry to be in. <laughs> like, yeah. I, there's not <laughs> there's not that many Christmas tree farms in like where I grew up now. They're okay. like kind of located more north okay. like in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, that's uh my grandpa that's that's how he put the kids through college was really? selling, that's awesome. Christ- selling Christmas trees, yeah. So did you ever work on the farm? Or? I the farm was gone by the time I was okay. I was around, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they on the property there's still some really big Christmas trees yeah. that didn't get cut down. But ah, that's cool. Yeah, mainly on uh, my grandma's farm it's just kinda mm-hmm. there's some woods but gotcha. mainly fields. Okay. Yeah. So elementary school we go to school. We come home. We're just we go into the woods. Are we bringing? Slingshots? I'm doing. Like, uh, do I'm doing. Uh, going to school, and then I'm going to my dad's business. Oh, okay. Every day. All right. What's that? Uh, my dad's a uh, civil engineer. Okay. Uh, family business. Yep. Uh, consulting firm. So civil engineer <clears throat> would encompass. So he's doing um, water treatment plants. Okay designing those for yeah. some of the smaller cities around Western Kentucky, mm-hmm. uh, land surveying. Okay. Uh, so measuring out the properties, Yeah. um, doing like some simple roadway stuff, subdivision building layouts, okay. that sort of thing. So my grandpa started that business in 1954. Okay. So it wasn't just growing trees. He was also okay, doing yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. 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 It was more, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. It was not his primary, uh, Income. Oh, I thought was you Christmas were just trees. rolling in it from like no, two months out of the no, year. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so what would you be doing at such a young age there? Uh, mainly just uh, pestering all the, the workers there at the office, uh, asking for candy <laughs> and snacks. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Lots of drawing. I don't know, just uh, yeah. normal kid stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So wh- why couldn't you stay at home? At- uh, both mom and dad were working, gotcha. so okay. Yeah, the bus would just drop me off right up there at the office. And really, that's a nice gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember they tried to get like all the kids were on one side. At, at, at I think it was like elementary. It wasn't. It was whatever grade it was and they wanted to bring it like closer to the kids so yeah. there's less kids crossing and there's right. like no kids on the other side and they're like no this is the path they'd go like this and then like come back later yeah. i was like okay whatever 
Um, how many kids were in your school or so like your class? So there was uh, from preschool to sixth grade, there was five boys and eight girls. So that would be 13. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense why the bus would uh, <laughs> drop you off where needed. So I, I went to... Uh, I went to a um, a Catholic uh, preschool, or not preschool, but elementary school, okay. and then middle school. There was more kids at the middle school mm. and high school, but yeah, small small classrooms there uh, for elementary school. Do you feel like you got better uh, education from that? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. I was always <laughs> pretty terrible at uh, at grammar. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I, I struggled through school. Yeah, a lot. Was that something that like people told you or like what, where, what? No, I just always knew that it came hard for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was always, there was nothing easy about school for me until later on. It got a lot easier, but yeah. Was, do you think that was just to like lack of studying or how the information was provided? Uh, What was going on? It was, uh, I mean, it was probably a couple things, Mm -hmm. probably probably more on me i would say okay you know like it's not i study you, you know I, video I, games i, I stu- no oh. i was i was in the woods <laughs> <laughs> how are you in the woods you're, you're at your dad's office well i'm what? saying you know like when getting home like gotcha. that's all that's okay. all i really wanted to do was just be outside and okay running around bikes and yeah just whatever making right, so, forts and, so what so when you're making forts are you cutting down trees then? I'm or? finding like dead trees, dead trees, and propping them up and okay, making teepees and stuff like that. Yeah. What was, when was your realization that you could like pretty much do whatever you wanted out there, and then you just started like having a great time? Um, I don't really remember that moment. Yeah. <laughs> It just at any time you just felt like you could do whatever. I'd say I say the one moment that I remember is that uh, you know I had my two older brothers. They were eight years older than I was and ten years older. Okay. And I would be out in the wood. The you know at a, at a young age, you know they would take me out in the woods and they'd kind of show me the property and the trails and stuff like that. And um, I remember one time. They told me, you know, like, oh my God, look, a giraffe, you know, and I'd look and yeah. by the time I turned around, they were running, you know, back to the house, just okay. kind of letting me figure out like how to get back home. Yeah. So yeah, that was, I, I do remember that how, quite, how'd quite that, well. How'd that go? Well, I, I'm, I made it back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, it, it wasn't like, uh, I guess if there's a river or a creek, it probably wasn't super flat then, was it? Or I mean, it was hilly. Okay. Yeah, it's hilly. Yeah. Yeah, Western Kentucky, they've definitely got hills. It's not mountainous by yeah. any means, but uh, yeah, there's hills. It's It kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, yeah, what's the city just uh, west of here? Like, uh, you know, some of those uh, state parks near Elburn and... Uh, oh, yeah. What was the uh, what was uh, the uh, the special like queue? Yeah. So it's hilly. Yeah. It's very hilly. Okay. There's some like outcrops, some like um, you know limestone outcrops in certain parts of okay. Western Kentucky. But okay. around my house, it was just uh, hills. Yeah. Did um, this whole that amount of land thing is still? Did a lot of people just have that much land? Um. Yeah. I mean, I had a couple friends that you know they had actual farms, you okay. know, where they had livestock and horses and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely more, more people own land, you know, in we, Kentucky versus we have like six feet out front. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe right. six feet. Yeah. It's just different, you know, <laughs> it's just different. Not yeah. as many people in Paducah. So what did, uh, eating look like at that time? Um, you know, foods, uh, fast foods. Okay. Is that like for lunch at school? Oh, at school. Or, or, well, uh, let, yeah. Let's go. Bre- what's breakfast? Are we eating breakfast? I do we do? I don't s- really remember eating breakfast. Okay. It was like, I had to catch the bus at like 6.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So my dad oh, would wake me up yeah, at six. Okay. I'd get ready and, you know, just head fl- out the door. Just fly out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at school, school lunches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's what's a school lunch look like down there? 
rectangle pizza, the square the rectangle uh, pizza. Yeah. Not uh, squares. You get yeah, rectangles it's a rectangle. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we'd get pepperoni. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't really remember too much about the, the school lunches. But okay. Yeah. Definitely was doing school lunches, you know, in elementary school. Yeah. And sometimes in middle school and high school, depending on what they were serving. Yeah. But, yeah. I was allergic to a lot of stuff growing up. So okay. my mom would always make me lunch. Yeah. And then she strategically would either like forget a sandwich or forget uh, like a pivotal part of that yeah. meal. She was also going through a divorce. Like a right. bo- <laughs> looking at it now yeah, yeah. probably was on yeah, purpose. So right. I'm like, mom, don't worry. I yeah. got this. <laughs> what were you allergic to? Wheat, soy, and corn. Oh, that sucks. So anything. Yeah. Um, pretty much anything processed is yeah. going to have like corn syrup. Yeah. Wheat, any any enjoyable carbs or uh, stuff like that, and soys and like. Uh, like, what would it do to you? Uh, I'd get a very runny nose. Okay. So then I wouldn't be able to breathe through my nose. Um, I, we went to a yoga class. That's just how cool I was at the YMCA with my yeah. family. And I remember the woman saying, All right, like, try to breathe through your nose. And I'm like, I was a mouth breather yeah. for an extended period of time. And my mom's like, Oh, he, he can't breathe through his nose. And like, I had no idea, like, it was important to breathe through your right, nose until right. later. Yeah. But like, that was the side effect <clears throat> of it. And I still wouldn't really eat that much wheat or corn. Yeah. But uh, long story short, I started binge eating because the doctor, after like 10 months or it might have been like a year or two, was like, Oh, you can start throwing stuff in like yeah. once a week. And I just like, I wouldn't listen to my body. I would just eat as much as I could. And it's like, you know what? We're, we're still working on it. So um, how, like, how did you find that out? That I was allergic to yeah. stuff? Yeah. Um, I had a long string of anytime I go to the doctor and get tested for something, yeah. it was positive. So okay. I'm trying to remember what the first thing was. Um, so I, I would get like rashes and stuff like that. Okay. I was also allergic to grass, dust, dogs, cats, okay. pollen, trees like if the sun looked at me wrong like i yeah. started getting a rash i got hives from a bunny once that i was hanging out at my friend's house um That's i was, a, I I was, was. a mess yeah. oh really yes interesting that was the first allergic reaction that i got was my bunny where, where did i I, get, I would get it on my arm okay. and it looked like mosquito bites really yeah and then it'd go away in like okay. 30 minutes i'd you know wash it up and then kind of yeah. settle back down but yeah, the bunny got ate by a coyote, so it didn't last that long. I would just solve it. Bunny got eaten. Yep. <laughs> so were you were you allergic to anything else as a kid? I as a kid, no. No. Okay. No. When I was nineteen, I started getting these like nasty hives all over my body. Really? It looked like an octopus, like was yeah. like you know getting stuck on my skin. Yeah big circles, big whelps mm. look like ringworm actually. Okay. And, um, yeah, I went to the doctor. That's what I thought I had. Okay. And, and then she the like STDs. pushed oh. the, pushed the, uh, the skin apart and she's like, Nope, it's not ringworm. Like ringworm. If you, if you press the skin, you know, you can still see the, the circle, but oh, she's like, yours go, yours is, uh, it's an allergic reaction. So what were you allergic to it? So it took a while to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but Cats, dogs, uh, aspartame. I mean, that's a good one to be allergic yep. to. Uh, insuds. So that's uh, uh, aspirin, Advil. Uh, so the only over-the-counter pain medicine that I could take is Tylenol. I mean, that's pretty good to be allergic to those things. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I was, I was, you know, drinking diet cokes, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. I was, I was taking Advil for the hives because, like, right. it was like so painful. You know, they'd just itch so bad. Oh, I bet. And I was just making it worse. Yeah. You know, it was terrible. So, yeah, I was on prednisone for <clears throat> probably like, uh, I don't know, two to three years, wow. something like that. Yeah. Because it was embarrassing, man. I mean, it'd be all over my face, oh, I bet. eyes. Yeah. Eyes would like one, I'd look like Quasimodo. Yeah. Like one eye would just be like almost swollen shut. And the prednisone would, you know, oh, yeah. kill it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, but talk about like binging on prednisone. Like I was, uh, I was putting some food away yeah. on that stuff just cause it makes your appetite go crazy. So what was your diet before <laughs> you started having the reactions? Uh, um, like let's go middle just school, pretty, high school. Pretty, pretty normal. Okay. I mean, not, not good food, mm-hmm. you know, 
not good food. Is that just because what was in the house? You'd go to friends' houses? Yeah, I mean, like my dad, he was a soccer coach. So there was lots of uh, late nights, you know, rolling through, you know, Wendy's or whatever, picking up food, getting home. Mm -hmm. Mom was working pretty late too. So there wasn't a lot of home cooked meals. There were some, but yeah. The, uh, the fast food route was definitely the easiest way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your favorite fast food growing up? Oh, man. Probably Wendy's was the okay. was the go-to. I'm thinking. My dad would always go to Wendy's because it had like the chili bar and like the salad bar. Like, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> We're not making any money back here, sir. None. Oh, cheese and crackers on top. Yeah. Nice, nice. Job. We had we had like Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, mm-hmm. and like Chick Fil A, but that was like kind of far out of the way. So that was about it. KFC. Okay. Had KFC. Nice. Ate there a couple times. I mean, you kind of have to in Kentucky, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So did yeah. you guys have enough for a soccer team? Well, so that was the high school. So my dad was a high school coach. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So the high school, there was about 60 kids in my high school and graduating mm-hmm. class. So yeah, there was, there was enough. There was enough. <laughs> enough we weren't any. very, we weren't very good. We weren't very good. <laughs> what is like when people make jokes about small towns, what is the most like realistic small like what's some of the small town things that you're like yeah it's a small town uh i don't know man i don't know i mean i it's it can be very clicky okay you know what's the most drama that's just like ripped through the town i don't know man. come it's just i don't know start shit you know we're probably not going to send it to him but maybe i'll tag i'll I'll tag your city in this yeah i would say there was (laughs) there was i lived in texas for about five years okay. and three of the five years I was in a very small, very small town, smaller than the town that I grew up in. And, um, yeah, it was, it was hard being an outsider in that town. Okay. You know, just making friends and stuff like that was, was tough cracking the code to get in the circles. All right. So we're in, we're in high school. Yep. <clears throat> we are breaking out in hives at 19. Yep. Did we graduate at 19 or do you uh, just have gra- to stay in extra I, school? I, I graduated in, um, on time okay. from high school. I mean, I, I was, was 18. I was 18. I didn't know what 2004. it was. 2004. I don't yeah. know if in Kentucky it was different. Or... No, no. I got my 20 year coming up this year. Oh. So, so, yeah. How do they reach out to you, by the way? Facebook. See, I don't go on Facebook. People are like, oh, I went to the yeah. reunion. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't go on Facebook. Like, yeah. I thought they just didn't tell me. I just didn't go on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, there's only, you know, 60 of us or whatever, so there's not too many to get in touch with. There you go, small town, easy to reach out to everybody. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right, so uh, I forgot what my question was. Oh, you graduated on time? Yep, yep. I graduated, uh, I think I was either 48 48 or 49 out of, you know, 54 kids. You weren't last. I wasn't last. That's phenomenal. I was so pretty, pretty bad though. At, at our school, there was a wall. I, you know, some people would call it a wall of shame. Others would not. But it was where everyone was going college wise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was pushed pretty heavily that you go to college, you pay a bunch of money, but you're yeah. going to make tenfold in whatever your career is going to be to pay off those loans. Right. What was the uh, conversation around education or employment for you at your school? Uh, at the school, uh, you know, we had counselors and okay. stuff. I mean, I pretty much knew what I wanted to do, like ever since I was young. How did we, fi- how, how did we figure well, that I, out? You know, being around my dad and my grandpa and, you know, construction and Christmas tree business? Not the Christmas tree. Not, <laughs> not, not the Christmas tree. Yeah, but civil engineering, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to eventually take over, you know, the family business. Gotcha. Um, so I kind of already had my mind made up on that. As far as that goes, what is that like knowing what you want to do? Because, like, for me, when I went to the guidance counselor, they're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I'd like to play badminton in college. I'm not the greatest at sports, but there's yeah. not a lot of people who play badminton. She's like, well, you got to go to California. I'm like, sweet, sold. 
<laughs> like that's that's how I'm gonna decide my future because I want to go play badminton like yeah. my mom did in college. Yeah. Um, so knowing that your path was going to be in engineering, um, did you have milestones that you had to hit, or you're just like, this is my goal. I'm just gonna get there. I just wanted to do it. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't smart enough to uh, set milestones mm. really and. I didn't do good in high school. Yeah. You know? Well, but I like, I think that A plus students, uh, this is just off social yeah. media, really good workers. B uh, level students are really good manager. And then yeah. C is usually like the owner or something right. like that. Yeah. So where do you feel like you started to excel or know that, I mean, you already knew that that was your goal. That's so like yeah. a lot of people graduating college now have no idea what they yeah. want to do. Yeah. Yeah. It was when I graduated. So bef- I would probably in my junior year or maybe it was my senior year, you know, I had a conversation with the parents. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, I do want to go into engineering and all that stuff. And, you know, we started looking at colleges um, or talking about them, not even looking like I didn't go on any college trips Yeah, at 18 or 17. But my dad's like, well, you know, you got to s- make good grades to get into <laughs> engineering school and you don't have good grades, you know? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, like, but we can get into that school. And he's like, well, you know, it takes money to get into that school if you're yeah. not getting scholarships and, I'm not paying for your school, Mm -hmm. you know, you're getting terrible grades. Yeah. Like I'm not betting on that horse, you know, (laughs) telling you. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess, uh, I guess community college it is. There's a a good community college there in my hometown. And, uh, it happened to be associated with university of Kentucky and they had an engineering university engineering, uh, or university of Kentucky engineering school there. So you could get a, a four year degree in chemical or mechanical engineering. So sick. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. So I went to go and I did terrible on my ACTs. I think I got a 16 and a 17, which doesn't get you anything. And, uh, yeah, so I had to, I had to go take additional tests at the community college to figure out, you know, where I was placed and with the other students and like which classes, because they asked, well, what do you want to do? (laughs) Engineering. Okay. Well, (laughs) You got to be really good at math and I wasn't good at math. Yeah. Math has always been very difficult for me. So I, I were going to Obanzi. I tested out of all my math classes that I needed for Obanzi, but I tested into extra classes for English because my grammar is so not, not good. Yeah. That's how I was too. I was like that on multiple subjects, but, uh, yeah, I had to take, I had to take a class that like, it didn't give you any credits if you oh, passed. Oh, like an 070. That's what I took. It, it was, was like, it was a precursor. Okay, you got to pass, you got to pass this class, which doesn't count. Mm-hmm. And then you get to go to the next class. That class yep. doesn't count. And then you get to go into algebra. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, man. I always, I always like tried to push myself in high school. Like I took pre-calc. Okay. So like I kind of knew a little bit, but yeah. I got like a C in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the first day, um, the first day in that class, like they were talking about like how to turn on a calculator. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh Let's my God. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, I like asked uh, like, uh, uh, a question, like maybe on day two yeah. and the teacher's like, you know how to do that? And I'm like, yeah, you know, she's like, come talk to me after class. And so she like. She's like, where did you go to school at? What classes? Like, why are you here? You know? And she ended up knowing my mom and dad. And um, she's like, all right, we got to get you out of this class. So she pushed me to the next one. So I I jumped. I jumped. And it was still, like, pretty embarrassing, you know, that I was having to go to that class. But, you know, looking back at it, and even my dad was like, hey, this will give you a good foundation. Mm. Go ahead and learn what you can. Do good in it. Yeah. Yeah, so it was all good. Yeah, I felt like for me, the only reason I did so well on like the testing and stuff was because I had that class. Like, yeah. And then 
I think I went and did my testing before like was needed or whatever right. it was. So it was fresh. Yeah. Like, it's not like I like knew a lot of things. It was just like it lined up perfectly right. yeah. <laughs> for whatever I was taking. Right. And I was like, this is this is where you need to be. Yeah. Should have taken more English classes. Would have helped me out. Yeah. Um. So with that four year degree, were you taking sixteen hours, eighteen hours? Like. So I was doing there at the community college. I think I was pushing between 16 and 18 okay. credit hours a semester. Yeah. It's also working full time. Damn. I was, uh, I, um, yeah. Cause I was paying for my school. Oh, I was paying for my school. My dad said, Hey, you know, we're my mom and dad. Hey, you know, this is on you. If this is what, if you want to, I don't care what you want to be, yeah. you know, but yeah, you got to pay for it. Yeah. So I got a job at FedEx as a package handler. Yeah. So what, I was, what type of packages are you handling? I'm, there, I, sir? I'm handling all kinds of packages. Okay. Yeah. So they were coming down the assembly line. You taking certain packages off and you're loading trucks. So give me, okay. So you are, I'm at the, the part where right before the truck, or you are. So yeah, semis would back into the bay. Okay. They'd be full of boxes. You'd have to unload the semis, put them on the conveyor belt. And then you'd have different people at different routes or trucks yeah. and you'd be taking the boxes off the conveyor belt and loading your truck. Okay. And yeah, so I was doing that from two thirty in the morning to seven uh, and then going to school after that. What was the biggest mistake you made at work before? I don't, I don't know. You I never like put it really, on the wrong no, truck no, or anything no, like that? No. no, I mean, I'm sure maybe, I don't know. I never got like reprimanded or like in Damn trouble. It. Maybe, uh, maybe showing up a little late. It's that was like, it was tough, man. I had like, you know, this was before cell phones really, where you could set multiple alarms, right. but I would have like five different alarms yeah. throughout my room. Cause you just get in a routine six days a week. You know, I, I had them set out through the room to wake up on time. When you, started that job did you know it was going to be 2 30 a.m and had you done a lot of early work before never never done any kind of early work like that before you're just like 2 30 i knew that it paid well what are, uh, what are we talking I, don't, I think i was making maybe 16 or 18 bucks an hour nice yeah 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 That's something like that something like that yeah it was pretty eye-opening like that gave me a lot of motivation to like mm. finish school because there was you know, there was a pretty rough crowd. I bet. Yeah. But isn't it wild how rough a crowd it can be, but they're still like the backbone yeah, of how sure. everything gets done. For <laughs> sure. For sure. And they all... Which is the craziest yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there was a lot of people that were just, you know, that was that was their life. Yeah. You know, and that wasn't something that I really right. wanted to be doing. You know, mm -hmm. it was tough, you know, like not being able to hang out with your friends. And, well, that, that you know was, that, I mean? that like, was going to be my next question. What was your day like? Because for me, when I started doing construction, I was like, I'm going to just like stick to the job. I was working yeah. 12, 14 hour days. I'd come home, eat, sleep, maybe hit the gym and then go to bed because I had to wake up at four yeah. 30. And I was like, I need to be like on top of my right, game. Right. My second job, I was like, I was single. I'm like, gotta, like, gotta do some things, gotta hang out and whatnot. Yeah. But I was ruined at work. Like, yeah. how did you balance anything? I mean, it was, yeah, it was, uh, you know, my day would start at, you know, 1.45 in the morning. The job was, you know, 25 minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, get done with work, drive straight to school and be in school from, you know, seven thirty, eight o'clock to twelve thirty or one, come home and uh do studies. Yeah. And then eat and go to sleep. Yeah. That was it. How did you learn how to study by yourself? Um I mean I I in high school I would always I would push studying off to the very last, you know, right before a test. Absolutely. Best way to do it. Um but yeah, I, I changed that up. I started, okay. you know, studying. So, I mean, I think from that standpoint, like I knew studying, you know, at a get it done mm -hmm. standpoint, this was just figuring out, okay, well, I got to do this every night. I got to stay on top of my homework and gotcha. 
that sort of thing. Yeah. Did you have to use like a planner or everything or you just no. knew everything was so tight? Like you just had yeah. to do it right then. I just had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What did your eating look like while you were working um, these hours? Probably, I don't know. Normal, you know. I don't. I keep saying normal. You do. Keep I, saying I, normal. I. I don't. I. I, ne- I. I wasn't really focused on diet. Yeah. At that point, mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah. Was well, that? Was I guess, that when you were taking the prednisone? Uh oh. Yep. Yep. I would have been taking prednisone at that time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would have been doing that. Yeah. So I'm just eating whatever. Yeah. You know, eating whatever is easy. And do you, what was your relationship with food at that point? Um, I guess, you know, going back into high school, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty chunky. Okay. You know, stout. Yeah. Um, but my first diet that I went on was a, uh, the Atkinson diet. I was, I think I was like, I would have been in eighth grade or freshman. I think it was freshman. So what was the... I got to get a better word. Precipice to that decision. Like why? Yeah. Did someone like call you fat? Did you look in the mirror? Oh, like, I mean, yeah. I mean, I would, I didn't like, like going swimming. I didn't like taking my shirt off. Yeah. Um, you know, I would get poked fun at mm-hmm. a little bit at school as well. And I'm like, all right, well, something's got to change. Yeah. And my mom was like, well, you can do this like all meat thing with me Let's if call. you want. So my mom was doing it yeah. and yeah, I like cut off like 25 pounds, like pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, I felt a little bit better about myself, Mm -hmm. hit a little growth spurt, started trimming down a little bit and yeah, I would always try and try and watch my weight a little bit, you know, when, when, if you were to look back at those photos now, would you be like, Hey, I thought I was a lot bigger than I was, or were you pretty accurate on how big you thought you were? Um, that's probably pretty accurate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never, the doctors never were like, oh my God, you're, you're a fat ass. Like, <laughs> you know, you're freaking obese, but I was a chunky kid, you know, yeah. like yeah. I was a kid that was eating, you know, bad food mm-hmm. for the most part. Yeah. Not a lot of fruits, not a lot of vegetables, like mm-hmm. processed food right. is probably what I was, you know, consuming a lot of. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm asking all these questions yeah. beforehand. They were for me, but now I'm trying to figure out for my daughter because, like, for me growing up, my we would eat out. We would maybe get pizza once a week. We never ate out unless we were like traveling or something yeah. like that. Um, but like my poor relationship with food was just the the binge eating yeah. when like I could once a week, and then I would just if my mom wasn't home, just we're, we're eating whatever rip through the pantry. Yeah. Um, but as far as like when I go back and look at when I what I thought I was yeah. huge, I, like I'm showing people, I'm like, no, 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 I was big. There's just not a good photo for it. Like I yeah. wasn't that big. Like oh, really? I, de- I definitely had man boobs and like had a, a yeah. stomach and stuff like that. Also, my thyroid wasn't working properly. Like I was on, I had low numbers, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was on HGH in high school. Um, but it's just interesting because there was kids that were bigger than me. They take their shirt off. It seemed like they had, there was no problem behind yeah. it. I'm like, where where is this confidence coming from? Like, right. how how can you do this? Yeah. So yeah, for, so you lost 25 pounds. Yeah, yeah, something like that. What did like a week of eating for you look like? It was like eggs and bacon and like sliced meats and yes. cheese, and that was like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got. I remember like the first week, I'm like, oh, this is really not that bad. Yeah. And then like the second week, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like I do not want any more of this. Like, Oh, you didn't like it? I No, I wanted, I wanted, you know, the carbs. Yeah. I wanted the carbs, but mm. I stuck to it. I, you know, did it for a month or two or whatever the rotation is. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, it worked. Mm-hmm. It worked. Yeah. And then for your mom, did she stay on it or did she just pick different diets and kind of cycle through Um, or she knew what she worked for? Yeah. I mean, she would do that off and on. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's always interesting because like Jessica's mom like would cycle through diets and my mom would just be like Diet Coke one a day and just like she was on whatever her thing was. Right. Um, But we're going through college. Yeah. Just 
getting that stuff done, working. Yep. At what point did you stop working at FedEx in the morning? So it would have been it would have been like a year and a half into college, okay. community college. And I was starting to take my calculus. Mm-hmm. So I got to Calc 1. And um, I was doing tutor for Calc, which was one of my friends who was, we were the same age, but he was like in Calc 3. Okay. You know, he paid attention in high school and he was pretty Nerd. smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were all nerds. We were all nerds. Um, so yeah, he was helping me out. And I went to my dad. I was like, hey, you know, I can't, I can't be, I can't be doing this. Right. Like I'm running myself too thin there's not enough time in the day so then that's when i left fedex and okay i was just picking up some hours at the office at my dad's office and helping out when i could part-time so so what does <clears throat> what does even like helping out of the office look like uh like scanning files okay. um you know he had a land surveying crew as well so i was doing that i think i started when i was either 14 or 15 helping out with the land surveying crew mm-hmm. so yeah Jumping were in you, on the crew. Were you just holding on the like the endpoint for yep. the land survey? Yeah, the much? rod man. Yeah. 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 I wasn't the gunman um at that age, but eventually I ended up, you know, becoming the gunman. Mm-hmm. You know, shooting shooting points and stuff. Did you ever get run off property if you're in someone's yard or anything um, like that? I I don't remember too many strange altercations. Okay. Um, there was some definitely interesting people like, uh, in more central Kentucky that we like some real backwoods people, you know, what are we getting wa- into walking on a big piece of property and finding like a cemetery and then, oh, hey. you know, the guy's like, Hey, you got to get out of here. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, there was, there was like some of that stuff, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, for the most part, it was fun. What are you surveying for at property, that point? Property, property lines. lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So running, running uh, transit across the property to get to your corners and marking okay. your corners and stuff. Yeah. That's that could be a lot of a lot of walking in a day. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. No doubt. Yeah, and you're you know you're in the woods. You're cutting line. Yeah. At this point, this was before GPS. Oh no. So you're you're going off a known point and then working your way out. Okay. So, yeah, seeing the point behind you, shooting it, looking out ahead, Mm -hmm. shooting your next point and then moving, moving to the next point. How did technology change from when you started at 14 to like when you left? I would say probably the GPS was a big one. Yeah. I remember helping out with uh, some of the GPS coordinates for marking uh, some water, water mains for a smaller town. Okay. Helping out with that. And then, um. So regular serving, you have a guy with, you can probably better describe this, but what's the... Yeah, you got a guy that's, uh, you know, on the gun. Um, so he's getting the the known coordinates. You've got a guy that's uh, cut in line. And then you got a guy that's uh, the holding the rod. Okay. So it's typically of a crew how of do you, three to four people. How do you find the first known uh Ordinance. So there's coordinates that, you know, known coordinates that you'll go to and start, gotcha. start your work. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like the metal stuff in the road? Um, that'd be your property corners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Typically. I think more, yeah. the more, you know, um, so when you started your in calculus, are you hitting the gym at all or we're yeah. just, we're school? Yeah. No, I was, I was, uh, I was in the gym probably, from about 10 or 11. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're just going back. What, yeah. What are, yeah we, are we hitting a bro split? Are we doing so we're strength just, and conditioning? You know, there's, uh, you know, playing basketball, okay. racquetball, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, all the machine stuff. Okay. So there was, a, there was a gym that was about a mile from my house mm-hmm. that I used to go to quite a bit, you know, yeah. just to hang out. Sometimes get nachos and stuff like that. Nice. At nice. the gas station right 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 <laughs> next to it. So So what what got you into the gym? Was your uh, friends doing it? Yeah. Other okay. friends were there, you know, playing basketball and yeah. whatnot. So it was more playing than actual working out. Hey, but, still moving. You know, sometimes would go hit the machines. Yeah. Not really know what I'm doing and whatever. But yeah, I would say in college I was trying to get to the gym. Okay. You know, a couple times a week. And what did what did the gym look like? You just hitting Yeah, bench. Okay. Doing bench. Never really got into like powerlifting. Yeah. But uh would try and do some cardio. Um 
Yeah, that sort of stuff. Are we looking at like bodybuilding.com, just no. men's health magazines, mm, no. just following the hot mm, chick in front of you? Maybe a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. But uh Yeah. Just trying to stay trying to stay active. Okay. Yeah. Like what was your uh not necessarily inspiration, but how did you figure out what you were gonna do? Uh at the gym? Yeah. Um just to lose weight. Yeah. To gotcha. Okay. Yeah, try and stay try and stay healthy. I would say that's probably the biggest motivation, inspiration. Yeah. So we have is it just two years at the community college? So I did uh yeah, two and a half. So I two, think it was two and a half. Two and a half. And then are you going to Kentucky? So no. So my my um my second year there at the community college, I was starting to take my um my my engineering um base courses. So okay. calculus, physics, thermodynamics, all those uh Damn. All, those, all those classes. Um and one of my buddies was like, Hey, I think you would actually really like this major. And I'm like, what is it? And he's like, it's called mining engineering. I was like, Oh, what, what is that? He's like, you should check it out. So I like Googled it or got yeah. on the internet and I'm like, yeah, that's what, pretty what'd sweet. you type in miners mining engineering. <laughs> okay, <it>. good. Yeah. <laughs> mining engineering. And then, um, I didn't really think too much of it. And, um, it was probably like a month later I was watching uh, the discovery channel and there was a a show on mining. What, right? Was it like how it's built or just yeah, the show? Yeah, okay. it was like kind of similar to that. Yeah. But um they they had uh they were interviewing some professors at uh it was called University of Missouri Rala and you know they were they were blowing shit up. Mm-hmm. They were playing with explosives. They were doing like some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Wow. This is sweet." And then I'm like looking at all the equipment and there's, you know, these 400 ton haul trucks, just massive, mm-hmm. massive equipment. I'm like, that is pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. And, um, I'm like kind of start, started to put things together. I'm like, okay, well mining, like that is like an industry that, you know, it's never gonna, it's never gonna go out a, of style. Need that for a you bit. know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. if it's, if it's not grown, mm-hmm. it has to be mined. I mean, that's like when you think of it from that point, it's like very true. Yeah. Like from these walls that are in this house to right. whatever, you know, it's all mined. So I decided to start looking at mining so, schools. So cement, it, I thought cement was a lot of sand. Or sand, is that... but it's still mined. Okay. You know, it's still extracted out of the, out of the earth. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Or limestone. Okay. Limestone aggregate. Yeah. You know, I yeah, think now, nowadays sand. we're very detached where things come from. We're just, yeah. they're there and that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. Your phones, a lot of cars, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. It's all extracted out of the earth. So, so when you that's saw fun. that, did you contact your buddy and say like, Hey, how do I get into this? Or what were the next? Not steps? really. It was, uh, it was probably, uh, it was probably talking to my dad, actually. Okay. you know, cause he's an engineer and, he was a pretty good sounding board and I brought it up to him. He was like, well, you know, that's, that's a, that's a, a good field to be in. But mm-hmm. you know, uh, when I was going, when he was going to school, mining engineering and civil engineering, they were like kind of combined. Okay. So it was more like disciplines. Um, but it, it had grown so much to mm-hmm. where it like split off. Yeah. So there's whole departments, mining engineering. So there's really two schools that I wanted to look at was UK in this uh, Missouri school. Mm-hmm. They were both about four and a half hours away from, uh, okay. from my hometown. A little so. bit of a commute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I ended up going to, uh, the Missouri school. Okay. Yeah. So what was it like being on your own for the first time? It was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was fine. I never really had a problem making friends and kind of finding my, uh, my own there. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. Made a lot of friends actually yeah. there at that school. From from partying. Or? Yeah, just uh, my my first uh, interaction was uh, I was going at going to the bookstore. Yeah, because at this point I'm not in the dorms, right? I'm a junior yeah. now. Um, I'd gotten all my gen eds out of the way. I got my associates. So yeah, I'm going to the bookstore, and there's a couple dudes. They're like, "Hey, what are you doing tonight, man?" I'm like, <laughs> I, "I don't know, man. Just got here." You're like, "Well, you should come party at." <laughs> At the at the Phi Caps house, and I was like, yeah. okay, all right, cool. That's a phenomenal so I sh- start. Show up, and you know, made 
really good, uh, really good buddies. And yeah, yeah, we were doing a float trip like the next night, you know, with <laughs> the fraternity and all of a that sudden, you know, so like much worse. <laughs> two weeks, two weeks later, I'm like getting like picked up and taken into the, the front room of the fraternity house. And they're like, all right, you got a pledge. I'm like, I don't know, man, like I'm old, you know, like <laughs> you guys are telling me I can't drink for my first semester. And they're like, yeah, you can't do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm out. And they're like, yeah, we understand. <laughs> well, you Wait. can still hang out with us. And I'm like, all right, perfect. Wow. So, you got so you got I, it got was em. like, it was like the best of both worlds. Like, you know, I was, ended up going to like their, uh, all their formals really? and like, yeah, senior speeches and all that stuff. I was just kind of, you didn't have to pledge. You know, I didn't have to pledge. You know, I, <laughs> you know, bump cigarettes from, uh, from the pledges yeah. and get, get a uh, sober rides, call them up. They'd come pick me up, that's you know? Oh, yeah, is so, that why they couldn't drink for the yeah, first? Yeah. Cause they're, they're doing sober rides. Wow. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. That's genius. Yeah. yeah that's um, a good time. what was one of the, uh, funnier um hazes is it hazing anymore or what is it called yeah i don't know i mean i don't really i don't really remember too much of that yeah yeah they just told you you couldn't drink <laughs> yeah they couldn't drink yeah <laughs> we need we need rides yeah, we want to yeah, be safe yeah, yeah yeah um so with going into what you were enjoying were the classes harder or you just kind of knew what you were there for and it was yeah it was at fine. that point i knew like what the end goal was um I mean, there was classes that were hard, but they were so specific to that, you know, degree mm -hmm. mining, that discipline that it was all very interesting to me. Gotcha. I did really good at, at that school. So right. the fact that you wanted to learn yep. helped a lot? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Surrounded by a lot of smart people, yeah. you know, and I think that always helps to, you know, being around other smart people, people that are yeah. probably smarter than you are and kind of helps yeah. get some motivation, do, you know, do better. I you know, agree. at that point, at that point I had kind of figured out my studying routine mm -hmm. and balancing that and what was needed. So yeah, I ended up, <clears throat> I think I only got, I only got one C and that was, uh, wow. that was uh, fluid mechanics. That was fluid mechanics, but you know, like that, I was, I, yeah, I was, I was studying a lot for that class, but it was like one of those classes that I would never use, mm -hmm. um, in my degree. Um, but it was a requirement to have, gotcha. you, know, you had to take, um, but yeah, that I was putting a lot of effort in. That was more of a civil engineering, okay. you know, discipline course. What was the, needed. what was the most interesting class that you took? Um, Probably, um, man, I really enjoyed geology classes. Okay. Yeah. Really enjoyed geology classes. Uh, learning about, you know, the earth. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All the different minerals and, uh, rocks and all that stuff was, uh, that's got what got you good. going. I mean, I don't know if it got me going, but you know, that's kind of part of it too. Is yeah. Mining. You got to figure out what you're mining for. Right. So when they... Like at that point when you're learning about the, the rock, we'll just say yeah. the geology, yeah. are they talking about like this when we bore and we find this or like what's the, what was the main? Interest? So it's like, you know, learning about fractures and different planes and, you know, like actually like figuring out, looking at a bunch of specimens and being able to identify what each one of those were. Gotcha. Yeah. That was one of my final exams was, I don't know, we had... 250 uh minerals scattered throughout the you know the no. lab and you had to go in and you know check it off like write in what that i remember was. for like chemistry class we had like 12 like 12 things that yeah. we had and then like i'd go to one and be like oh no that that's that's the one that i was looking for yeah. the periodic table or whatever yeah. it was um how did you so was it memorizing 200? Or well, it was like, knowledge? it was, uh, I would say knowledge because certain minerals will do certain things when you, you know, drop acid on them or, okay. you know, if your fingernail can scratch it or mm -hmm. it scratches your fingernail, yeah. the hardness of the mi mineral, you can kind of diagnose and figure out. Yeah. Cause some of them look like almost identical, right? Really? Yeah. So when... When do you feel like you could consider yourself a smart person? Because just being able to do all those things, like, yeah. feel like you're you're making your way up that ladder. Well, I remember, what, 
I had a, I had a babysitter, uh, when I was younger and she was actually from like the St. Louis area. Okay. And, um, I reached out to her and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to Rolla. And she's like, I didn't think you were that smart. <laughs> you know? I'd say I like, like when, when, I like the when, when I got to Rolla, I was like, okay, like I'm not I, like, I'm, I feel, I feel smart. Okay. Yeah. When I got to that, that university. That's so like, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a big confidence boost. So, would you say it was the ability to learn or you just had so much knowledge already? Like what, what encompasses like the smart for you? I don't know. I think just like dedication to, you know, figuring something out and okay. going after it and kind of executing like studying or mm-hmm. any of that. What was there any point in your college career where you're like, ah, screw this. Like I'll figure something out. No, no. Just this is I, like I said, I knew early on like yeah. what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do engineering. Okay. I mean, I did change my major right. from civil engineering to mining engineering, but that was it. Like mm-hmm. I knew that that's, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. That's phenomenal. So did we have an internship where we got to blow shit For up? For sure. Okay. For sure. My first one is in, um, was actually in Western Kentucky. Um, so it was right before I figured out about mining engineering. Mm-hmm found out about it, you know, yeah, I want to do this. I want to get enrolled. Okay. I got into Rolla. Okay. You know, it's the summer before I'm going to that school. Mm-hmm. Like, let's go to work. I wanted to try and get an internship. There was a rock quarry, um, you know, right down the road by Kentucky Lake. Mm-hmm. And my, my dad, um, my, one of my dad's workers, she knew the plant manager there. Nice. They went to church with each other. So I filled out or made a resume handed off, got the job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that summer I was, you know, running haul trucks, um, like massive, you know, equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think these were probably a hundred ton haul trucks. So probably not, there's probably not union down there. Um, so that that was, that was non-union. Okay. That was non-union. I remember that was my first dealing with, um, you know, the union because there was a big union push. Like, that summer, Ooh. like trying to get, you know, I, I sat in the room and listened to, yeah. you know, the reps come in and mm-hmm. tried to, you know, push the union work yeah. uh, in on that quarry, but it didn't, it didn't pass. The vote didn't pass, but yeah, running haul trucks, you know, loading, loading, uh, explosives in the, in the holes, shooting, uh, working in the, uh, in the crusher plant. Um, so how do the explosives work for you guys? So there's just someone drilling in a pilot hole and you guys drop the explosives. Yeah. So they're, they're the drillers will go in, they'll, they'll have a pattern, you mm-hmm. know, they'll drill the holes. Um, and then once they're drilled, they'll get out of there. Then the explosives crew will come in with their explosives truck and they'll pump, uh, info down the hole. And, Oh, so it's not like a dynamite stick. No. No, there's uh, yeah, very rarely do they use like true dynamite anymore. Okay. So it's a lot of uh, ammonia nitrate and diesel fuel, and they call it ANFO. And then uh, emulsion is a product that's uh, that's pretty good for wet holes. So ammonia nitrate, the ANFO is not it's not a water repellent, but the emulsion emulsion is. So does someone have to be at the end of the hose when you're like pouring it in so like you go first hole second like how does the filling of the hole work yeah you work your way okay out coming back so you're not driving over a loaded loaded hole with the equipment did these they, are like did they ever go off when not no oh okay no, no. so safe no yeah okay no, it's pretty safe yeah yeah the last thing you would do would be tying in the shot like, okay at the very very end gotcha yeah you'd load all the holes you get all your timing caps for each hole, you know, yeah. and uh, how you want it shot. And then um, after they're all loaded, then you go ahead and tie it in with the uh, with the primer cord. Okay. And then, um, yeah, let her rip. Did uh, did anybody ever tell you to go get like a Henway or anything like that? A Henway? What do you mean? Uh, a Henway. A what? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what? So I was to say, what's a Henway? And what's then I say about two, three pounds. Um <laughs> Uh, That's my favorite construction okay. joke. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did, were they, I, they probably couldn't do too many uh, jokes on you when you're dealing with explosives. Yeah, no, there was not any horseplay. <laughs> no horseplay. 
<laughs> but I like I remember, like you know, they were putting me in like the operating seat of of the equipment. You really? Know? Yes. Yeah. So like, and I'd run equipment, you know, mm-hmm. tractors and that sort of thing on the farm or on our land. Yeah. But yeah, like going up to like driving up to a berm, you know, and a big piece of equipment. Yeah. Where there's an 80 foot, you know, high wall or a hundred foot high wall. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty nerve wracking. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that was, uh, that was fun though. So when you're getting into all that, at what point are you like moving on, like in your career, are there scouts? Because I feel like if there's only two schools that are doing it, like a lot of jobs are probably looking. So there, there was, I mean, I think at that time I, um, maybe there was like 10 mining schools in the country. Okay. So still not a lot when, when you think about it. Um, it was a very hot um, degree to get. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of jobs. Yeah. I would say that, um, at that point in my career, like that didn't, I mean, there wasn't really anybody looking at me, Okay, you know, but after, um, the first career fair, you know, I, I had a couple job offers. Um, yeah. So my second internship was in Missouri Mm -hmm. to become a in-state student. I had to work in Missouri, uh, during the summer. Mm -hmm. So I got a, uh, internship at an underground lead zinc copper mine An underground lead zinc zinc and copper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was those those sound like heavy metals. Those. Yeah. It was pretty heavy. Yeah. Pretty heavy stuff. So are you, what are you doing for them at that point? Same, same type of deal. Like I was just another worker. Gotcha. This one was, uh, 3,600 foot underground. Um, how, what's the what's the mode of starting? transportation? Yeah, what's the start to so that? Basically, jump in an elevator and you go down. Really, uh, man trip. Yeah. Do you have uh, oxygen? Do you have? Yeah. So they'll pump they'll pump uh, fresh air into those that's mines. Not, that's nice of them. Yeah. So there's uh, fresh air that gets pumped in, and then they'll have exhaust fans. You know, at the under the other end of the mine, and they'll yeah. help pull pull the uh, the air out. No close calls or anything like that. Hmm. You know, I, I, um, looking back, no, um, but there were definitely some eye opening experiences for me, you know, at at that mine, they were doing pillar extraction. So the pillars are like, you know, the foundations of, you know, your home. So this mine had been operating for so long that, you know, they were starting to mine out. Um, but these pillars that were, you know, 80, a hundred foot tall, my God. Oh yeah. How huge. big is this mine that it's they huge, can get huge, that much? Like huge. Yeah. So some of the, the some story. of the rooms were, you know, 100, 120 foot tall. Gotcha. And the vein, they were chasing the vein of ore. So mm-hmm. this lead zinc, it was in the Galena belt there in Southeast Missouri. But yeah, I'd been running since, I don't know, the forties or fifties. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when they got to the end of the mine cycle, you know, you think if they were able to make a lot of money on, you know, the 120 foot passageway mm-hmm. that what's left, you know, every 50 feet or whatever, there's these huge pillars. So they were pulling the pillars out and getting that. What do you mean by pillar? Like so the foundation, the foundation of the mine. Oh yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, the thing holding it up the thing, holding it up. Oh fuck. Yeah. So they were, they had engineering behind it, like in house, like, okay, let's pull this one, but not, these three around it, you know, gotcha. and when we go in there to mine out the, the ore, yeah, let's use remote control equipment to do it. So ah. nobody's getting, you know, going into like an unsafe zone. Right. But yeah, I remember, I remember one, uh, afternoon I was sitting there at lunch and my foreman, um, you know, gets a call on the radio saying, Hey, we, we need you to go to X, Y, Z, you know, location. And I see him like grab his stuff very quickly. And I just said, Hey, can I come with you? And he's like, yeah. So I, you know, yeah. grabbed my stuff, went with them and I'm like, what's going on? He was like, well, they were having a roof collapse. Um, so like we get from like, you know, here to the, you know, 50 feet away and it's all dark, yeah. but you can just hear, it sounds like a, a thunderstorm. Are you underground when you get this call? Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, yeah. The lunchroom's underground. Yeah. Yeah, so once you go down for the day, you're down there. Oh. Yeah, you're down there. 
Yeah, so we go up close to it and you you know, you hear it. It's like shaking your body. It's so loud and yeah. you know, you shine in the light and you just see massive chunks of, you know, rock falling and eventually it got so dusty that we had to get out of there just cuz yeah. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> That was pretty sweet. So with a roof collapsing, does that mean it's collapsing up to like land? <clears throat> no. Like level, I mean, at like, this point, you know, 30, 3,600 foot down, the, right. the ground will stabilize itself. So it'll arch out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For a shallow or mine or tunnel, then yeah, yeah, you could get subsidence is what that's called. Gotcha. That happens a lot in coal mines because they kind of do some similar things with long walls and stuff like that. They actually plan for subsidence. So if if you're getting a pillar out, are you trying to extract, like how do you get it out of the mine? Like, are you trying to get it out? You're not getting it out in one piece, are you? No. So you'll shoot, you'll shoot, you'll drill and shoot it. So you'll, you'll drill holes in the pillar, then you'll load it with explosives and then you'll, you know, shoot it and then go get the ore. Gotcha. So what's your breathing apparatus when you're down there? Just uh, regular, you know, nothing, nothing. Yeah, most of the time the air is uh, very clean. You know, it's mm-hmm. only uh, breathing apparatus is, you know, when you're doing um, certain operations like really? uh, shot creep. You okay. Know, shooting shot creep, you'll throw a respirator on. Um, dusty, dusty uh, operations, you you throw a respirator mm-hmm. on, like drilling the holes. Yeah. That created a lot of dust. Yeah. You know, even though you'd use water. But um, they would suggest you putting a respirator on. <laughs> we would suggest you put this yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you get that job done. You finish your schooling. Uh, where are you headed after that? So my last internship was uh, down in Texas. Okay. I was doing uh, surface coal mining. Um, and that's where I ended up. Getting to the dirty stuff. Yep. Surface. Surface. Not underground work. But yeah. Big equipment. Big equipment. Surface coal mining. Run yeah. that by me. So basically, you're just stripping the land back. Okay. You're exposing the the ore, which is coal, and then um, you're just shoveling that out of the ground. Okay. Not using explosives on this job because it was like all dirt. There wasn't any rock. But coal was there. The coal was the thing that we were extracting. So, yeah. like, are we talking? Do you start with like a small square and then you just keep opening it up, or yep. what? What did the peel, mining side look like? The, you gotta you gotta peel back the 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 top layer of dirt mm. and then um, yeah, bench your way down and um, try and maintain your strip ratio from you know the stuff that you couldn't sell to the stuff that you could sell. So we were at like a, um, a eight to one um, ratio. So every eight yards that you pull out, you get a yard of coal. Okay, so it's not like you had to be careful. You just ran it all through the trucks, or like you put it on trucks. Oh, you would sep you would separate it. You oh, would separate uh, wait, it by yeah, the yeah, machine. By the machine, yeah. You oh. would take you, you know your big hydraulic shovels would peel back the 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 dirt. Yeah, and then front end loaders would go in there and peel up the coal, pop okay. up the coal, and load that out, put gotcha. it into a different equipment, mm-hmm. and they would take that to the. What plant. what does coal look like? It's black. Yeah, it's black. Do you, did you get coal all over you and that yeah, dust I mean, and stuff? Yeah, I mean, you're uh, you're at the end of the day, like blowing your nose, like it's it's all black. Yeah, yeah, not as dirty as underground coal, but it was mm. still, you know, it was a dirty job. What was I'm trying to think of a better question to ask? Then what was the worst thing you saw there? Um, <laughs> like what what was your uh, thought of your health as you were seeing those things, like? dealing with it uh not not really too much i mean yeah. whenever i would go into like uh conditions where it was like super dusty like mm-hmm. i would throw my respirator on and, okay you know, so watch you, out for myself you yeah. felt pretty confident like yeah. when you had a respirator on yeah. like you were good to go yeah okay yeah was there ever people that were like oh i've never wore a respirator before or like oh i'm sure yeah i'm okay. sure there you get those people you yeah know, everywhere but yeah for the most part i felt pretty pretty safe there so what is the i know other than like burning coal is there any negative uh reasons like while you were mining it like strip mine is it strip mining yeah, strip mining, strip mining? Yeah. what like what was the what are the negatives for strip mining coal um, if there are any i don't know if you're with big coal but yeah i i mean I never really saw too much of it. Okay. You know, it was, uh, I, I felt like the company that I was working for, they did a really good job um, 
after, you know, an area was mined out of reclaiming the land. Oh, great. Yeah. So, I mean, which I always thought was super cool, Mm -hmm. you know, growing up on property, like being able to make it better than what it was prior to, uh, you know, mining. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really cool. They had a really good program, lots of, uh, you know, good ponds, good prairie land, you know, saw a lot of, lot of wildlife there on the uh, reclaimed sections, lots Mm -hmm. of trees planted, like, you know, it was kind of a place that you would have loved to be able to go hunting on. Yeah. So lots of big deer, lots of, lots of waterfowl. That's cool. Really good fish fishing and in some of those ponds. What as well. is that like a, a government initiative that like they have to do it? Yeah. Or? So okay. that one, uh, that one was, uh, was a state based. Okay. Um, I forget the name of the agency, but yeah. Um, but the, what was cool about that company is that they kind of set a lot of the standards mm-hmm. to, like what kind of, or, or that, the, that state agency looked back to that company's process on kind of yeah. what they were doing and kind of use that for a baseline mm-hmm. of, um, for other companies. Yeah. So yeah, they were, they had their shit together. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so much money in, in, uh, mining, <laughs> yeah. uh, as far as like figuring out what section you wanted to go to or mining, like what are the opportunities as far as jobs, um, as far as an, a minor engineer, um, it all, I mean, I would say currently right now, like coal mining, um, that, that ultimately made me switch kind of industries. I, I went from coal to limestone, okay. um, or aggregates, aggregate mining, uh, here in Chicago. Okay. But, um, yeah, all the metal, all the metal mining right now, that's pretty hot, mm-hmm. you know, with uh, all the electronics, yeah. batteries, all that stuff. Is is that because <laughs> now they're trying to keep it in the US or just I, in Okay. I don't know. I'm I mean, I'm not doing mining anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm kind of out of that game. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm now I'm kind of went full full circle. I went back into construction. Okay. Uh, Wait, let, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so we graduate college. Yeah. Then the mines pull you in or where are you going? Yeah. Texas. Okay. Yeah. So I lived down in Texas for five years. Oh, that's what you said. Yep. So yep. now, now I can ask you the question, small town, <clears throat> are people like just like shutting doors on you or like, how are they not being friendly? No, I, they're not shutting doors, but just, you know, they're clicky, you know, it's like middle school Okay. all over again, a little bit. You know and what I mean? The, well, oh, absolutely. You, yeah. You, this, this neighborhood, except for everyone in their house is their own clique. Like I can barely talk to anybody in there. Oh, really? 700 people minimum here. Yeah. This neighbor called the cops on my dog. Uh, like so, <laughs> so many people have moved. It's unbelievable. And we barely met, like, it's just, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. That's tough. Do yeah, they have a grocery store in your town and you're like waving at people in there? Yeah, I mean, they had, you know, Walmart. And okay. Pickly Wiggly or whatever it was. Hey, can we take a uh, restroom break? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. We'll pause. We'll end that one. And we'll go back that way. So you're running into uh, a couple of Karens in town. There's got to be something. What's the I worst? Don't, what? I, don't, I, don't, I really don't. No know. one would talk to you. You try to I tell like you know. Jokes I mean, it's not like everybody laugh. were like you know, you know, super rude. But it was just off. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it was. Know, it was. Uh, you know, and that was the first time like uh, stepping out of a like a uh, a scene where everybody was your age, mm-hmm. right? You guys were all like into similar things, right? And being put into the real world where you didn't know anybody, yeah. And now you got people that are a lot older than you and you got people that are younger than you. And like, there's, there just wasn't like a crowd of right. people like going through similar life experiences. Yeah. So what, what did the average day look like for you at that point? Cause five years is a long time. And are you doing the same job there for five years? Or? I was bouncing around. Um, so like the first three years I was in Northeast Texas, um, you know, and then I moved down to Austin. Things got a little bit easier when I moved to Austin, just finding like a crowd of people to hang out with outside mm-hmm. of work. But yeah, in Northeast Texas, there was lots of hunting, um, lots of uh, gym time. Okay. Going to the gym. Were, were you always a hunter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since I was little. What was, 
what was your weapon of choice? Deer, squirrel, mm. waterfowl. Those were kind of the... Oh, we were talking about your squirrel hunting days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, I'm, now I'm remembering more, more things. Yeah. Um, when did you start shooting squirrels? Um, I don't... I, I may have been like seven or okay. eight, maybe, when I f- killed my first squirrel. And then, are you field dressing it or what? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. What What does that entail? Uh, taking the guts out and taking the hair off of it, chopping the head off, cutting the feet off, tail. What's left at that point then? Well, there's not much. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's not much. There's not a lot of meat on a squirrel. You got to get a lot of them mm-hmm. to make a meal out of it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you use the pelts for anything or? No. 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 I feel like you probably need a lot of. Is squirrel pelt good? Uh, I mean, I don't know, making a cool <laughs> hat or something. I don't know. <laughs> so what are you hunting in Texas and what are you hunting? With? Uh, hogs, um, deer, um, some predators. So coyotes. Okay. Um, what else? Waterfowl ducks and, um, yeah. So are you primarily hunting? F- oh, it's my dog. She's going to make my pregnant wife get out of bed and let her downstairs. I'm like, who is barking? Um, when you're hunting, are you primarily hunting for food? Or yeah. You, okay. Yeah. So how much do you need to hunt to eat? Is this like a, a daily, uh, weekly? I mean, like, well, you're going on certain animals. You can only hunt during season. So okay. for ducks, you have 60 days a year mm-hmm. to shoot ducks. Um, so you can kind of stock up and you know, eat that throughout the year. You, you big fan of duck? Or? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Duck's really good. Very Is that good. Just, just the way you cook it or? Um, yeah. I mean, you can, uh, you gotta, you gotta cook it kind of medium rare in my opinion to, mm-hmm. for it to taste well, but yeah, marinate it and cook it like a steak basically. Really? Like yeah. a steak? Yeah. Yeah. Or you can chop it up and, uh, you know, make different dishes out of it, you know, okay. with rice and that sort of thing or, Chop it up and put it on jalapenos and wrap it with bacon. So, put it on so the grill. if we lose like energy for like the electricity for a couple of months, like you'll be you'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's that's like such a skill to have, and now that we live in such an age to where that's something we don't even worry about. It is like, weird. Like, like just... for me, I grew up. Like three miles, like that way. Yeah, <laughs> like right. I, I never thought about where my food came from. Like I, I go to the grocery store, yeah, I get my food. Right. Yeah. Um. Like the the house is built. Like the wood right. gets brought in. Like yeah. I know nothing of like how things actually happen. Yeah. So it's always been interesting to me as I get older. It's like okay, like what if these pleasantries are not here? Right. Like I think preparedness is. I don't know. I like preparedness. Then you get thrown in with like conspiracy theories, right. but I feel like just general skills are yeah. important to have for sure. <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. So for you having those skills, do you, that's just who you are. I'm like, is that something you try to keep up with? Or? Yeah. I mean, I would say that, um, that that was true. Um, I'd say, since I've had my uh, my girls, okay, that that's kind of fell off a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, because just yeah, I'd, I'd rather be spending time with them, yeah, than taking time for myself. I used to know? work out five hours a day before, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you know, things change, right? Yeah. But I mean, now they're getting to the point where they're getting a little bit older, yeah. right? So my my goal would be that I'd get to you know pass those lessons on to them. Mm-hmm. And share those experiences like, you know, yeah. my dad did with me. So, so when you were some of your fondest memories with your dad yeah. hunting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just being out in the woods, you yeah. know, I liked being out there and spending some good time with him. It does your voicemail say, sorry, I'm in the woods. I'll get back to you. No, no, it does not. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that should be on a door somewhere or like on a mat for you. I'm sure it is. In the woods, in the woods. Um, give me like a scenario like of enjoyment from when, when you're hunting with your dad. Um, you know, just, uh, 
putting the time in to scout, you know, ahead of time, figuring out a good, uh, a good spot to be at, try and figure out the pattern of, uh, we did a lot of deer hunting, Okay. deer hunting and squirrel hunting. Um, but yeah, just putting in some, some work and then kind of getting a payoff at the end by harvesting an animal. So what does scouting look like for <laughs> walking around, walking okay. around the woods, you know, looking for signs, looking for tracks, looking for, you know, deer poop and mm-hmm. looking for scrapes, you know, or they're uh, pawing at the ground, looking, um, looking for rubs on, on trees, you know, where they're mm-hmm. using, uh, their antlers to kind of mark their territory. Okay. So just looking for deer sign and then trying to, you know, figure out how the land's, you know, laid out and picking a good spot to, you know, be in a good position to take an animal. So you're walking, we'll say five, 10 miles, like you find a spot where there's deer poop, scrapes, all like, hey, a lot of stuff's going on here. What's the next move? Set up and hunt. So are you just like pitching a tent and just getting up oh, in the morning no like, i mean what you, what the 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 property that we hunted on i mean um we never did any like overnight camping okay you know um it was just get up early in the morning and you know make your way out there before sunrise um so walking around out there in the dark okay do you then, have to, do you have to set up a tree stand or how does that so work? we did uh we did a lot of ground blinds so him and i would just uh you know, pack that in. It's basically like a tent and you step inside and you just sit in there. Really? Yeah. It's like, it's a camouflage tent. That's fantastic. I think yeah. I saw one today on the way. Oh, that's a lie. Not today. Uh, this year on the way to porcupine, um, mountain or hills or whatever it was. Okay. Um, but that was the first, I didn't know. I thought that was just like a, up in the trees. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know they have them just no, it's you're a, chilling. It's in the a great, it's a great way to take kids hunting, you know, really? because you know, um, if they fall asleep, it's not a big deal. Right. right? They're in They're a not chair. falling out of a tree. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I was actually scared of heights when yeah. I was younger. So okay. I didn't really like getting, getting mm-hmm. too high up. Um, but yeah, so that's how we hunted. That's, that's how he kind of broke okay. it in to me. And, um, and then I ventured up in the trees after that when yeah. I was probably 16, 17, 18, something so like that. So what would be, because I'm eating the microphone, what would be the amount of time that you would spend like collectively for like with your dad, like 10 hours or like three days? Like what are you looking I at? I mean, we're, we're hunting, you know, um, you know, Saturday and Sunday because deer hunting, you only have like you know, three, three weeks okay. during gun season. And that's when he would, he would take me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you're spending, you know, six, six hours in the woods with him on the weekends, you know, each day. Yeah. So yeah. And like, it's so funny. Cause like I would go to museums with like, I don't know why my dad liked museums back then, or I know why my mom did, but now they're both museum people. Um, but like we'd spend like hours and stuff like that. And like as a kid, I was like, what is this garbage? But now it's just like spending time yeah. with like your kids is phenomenal. Yeah. And like that much time, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Right. Like it's going to be enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> but sure. And I, I feel like the payoff of also learning something yeah. such as scouting and shooting right. and all those things just adds to the experience. Yeah. No, it was, uh, we had a, we had a lot of good times, uh, Mm -hmm. growing up doing that together. So when you're in Texas, did you find a group of people to do that with? I was doing solo. I mean, duck hunting is a little bit different. Uh, duck hunting is definitely easier with more people, like with a group. Okay. It's a different style of hunting. Um, you still have to scout. Mm -hmm. Um, I did all mostly public public land so that's kind of also enjoyment Mm -hmm. as well as you know you're competing to get the best spot you know or figure out where the ducks are going to be at what do you mean by that well you know um getting to a location there first um and so is it like some like somebody at a specific time it says like, all right, you guys can go into the park or what do you mean? Yeah. So like, um, some, some spots are like that. Okay. Some spots like here in Illinois, they've got a couple public places to hunt, Okay. but you have to draw to get yep. your spot. Right. So if you draw a low number, then mm. you get, 
you know, the pick of the litter. Okay. But, and sometimes you go there and they don't draw your name. Mm-hmm. Um, but in Texas, it was, a, you know, just kind of wide open for mm-hmm. the most part. Like if, if you could hunt on that piece of property, you could set up there. So, gotcha. Yeah. So just spending the time. So like what I, what is duck hunting? The only thing I think I've seen is like either like movies where they're sitting by a pond and then someone says something and then they're yeah. shooting. At it. Is that what duck hunting is? I mean, uh, I, it, there's probably more to it. Okay. Than that. Yeah. I mean, throwing, throwing decoys out, you know, setting. Is that to bring them in? To bring them in. Okay. Yeah. To bring your, uh, bring the ducks in. There's the, the calling aspect of it. Um, you got to be good at that too. It makes it, makes it a lot easier. Once they show up and see that it's a fake duck, they don't go. Well, yeah. They, they, they can, they can flare off. They oh, can, okay. But the idea is to trick them. Gotcha. Yeah. You get enough of them that it's like. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's easier with a, a single or, or, a, or a double coming in versus a big group. Cause okay. you know, you're being still cause they've got pretty good eyesight. Do they? Very really? good. Yeah. So if you're moving or like moving your head, like yeah. they'll pick that out and they'll, they'll fly off. Okay. Yeah. But duck hunting, you know, majority of the time it's just like you can have a conversation you know you can shoot the shit you can be loud you know and then when you see ducks and you start calling and as they get closer then you kind of you you hunker down and you don't move and okay you're just uh you're just calling to them does anybody does anybody ever fuck it off oh yeah for sure (laughs) for sure yeah for sure for sure does everybody get mad at that yeah for sure for sure yeah 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 yeah, you call it pie facings when you, you know, you take your face and you look up, you know, at the bird. You're not supposed yeah. to do that because it shows, you know, the whites of your eye uh, and your face and you're moving, you know, so you have to be very still. You can, you know, like, yeah. move your eyes and watch, but typically there's only one person. The person that's calling the ducks really gets a, a chance to kind of move around because... How do you shoot them then if you can't move? Well, when they get close enough, then you can jump up and you can shoot. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's buckshot at that point? No, this is all steel shot. Well, I, it's like, uh, it's it's a, it's not as big as buckshot. It's smaller. smaller but but it's, that's still a spread. It's a spread. Okay. Yeah, it's a spread. Yeah. Does that ruin the duck? Um, it can if, if it's, uh, if the duck's too close. Okay. Um, but... Majority of the time, you're still able to salvage uh, mm. the meat off that. So then, are you? Do you usually hunt with duck or ducks? Uh, dogs mm-hmm. or, and they go pick up the you ducks can. for you. Yeah, you can. It's easier with a good dog, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because they do all the work for you. you yeah. Know, you shoot them, and then you can, you know, tell them where the ducks at, and they'll yeah. go out there, swim out there, and pick it up and bring it back. But you can also do it without animals okay. too. You just have to go out there and get it yourself. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so, duck hunting is really fun. I really enjoy that. When you plan out your hunting, do you plan it out by season or like what you're hungry for? Uh, I would say by season. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah, more sense. Yeah, growing up. Because, yeah, like like I said, you, you know, for duck hunting, you've got 60 days to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, deer hunting, you've got, you know, three weeks yeah. of rifle. I mean, you, you do have more opportunities doing archery, um, which I did a lot growing up. Um, but I kind of fell off a little bit when, when I was probably down in Texas, uh, that may have been the last time that I went archery hunting, but that's fun too. It's very hard. They have a good range at, uh, Blackwell. Yeah, Yeah. they do. Yeah. Yeah. I go there sometimes after the gym Mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, I need to come here more consistently so I can hold my bow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's no joke, man. It's no joke, but archery is fun. Yeah. yeah. So as far as when people come to you that are like, Hey, I think hunting is unethical, not, 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 or like it's too violent or whatever yeah. it is. Like what's, what's the conversations that you usually have to deal I with? I mean, I think, uh, I think it's all about conservation. Okay. I mean, really, I mean, um, you know, it's all a, it's all a balance, right? Yeah. So I want to ensure that we can continue to, to do that. Mm hmm. And and is the because I, I would like to start hunting like yeah. I I wouldn't say I'm proficient with a gun but I yeah. feel like I can get into archery more consistently yeah. and more people that way but I, I to train more for that end 
Um, so not having hunted myself, like for you, is there a, uh, because you're not trophy hunting. Right. And like when you go out to hunt, is it, I'm trying to think of like framing it from a negative point of view. I think, you know, like the biggest thing, like for me, like if I were to pick up a bow and I would practice, you Mm -hmm. know, let's say two or three months after not shooting for a while. Yeah. I mean, I would get pretty, I would get pretty good. Well, oh no. So I mean like hunting in general, like how would you, uh, for people that say like hunting is immoral or bad or whatever it is like for you, what, um, cause I think some people think that like you get a kick out of killing things. Yeah. But from your perspective, like what would you say other than the conservation thing, like the hunting yeah, I don't. I don't guess I've ever really been pressed on that too oh, much okay. before. Yeah, yeah. I, really I, haven't. I, 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 they might listen to the podcast. I have some vegans in the family. Yeah. Actually, a lot of vegans yeah. in the family, and uh, there, there seems to be a sense of they, like cruelty that they believe that's yeah. there. But for me, I be, like since I haven't hunted yet, like right. I, I'm not going out there so I can just like murder an animal. Like I'm looking for. Well, I guess that's kind of yeah. like what I'm saying is like you're always, or you know, I would say that majority of hunters like mm-hmm. their goal is to have a quick, clean mm-hmm. kill. Yeah, you don't want the animal to suffer. Right. You know what I mean. So like, you have to be willing to take ethical shots. Right. You know. So like. If I, if I start practicing, pick up my bow, like I'm not going out there and shooting a 70 yard shot. Mm -hmm. That would be like, you know, 70, 80 yard shot. That would be like somebody that, you know, years and years of experience that could maybe take that shot. But like, I would just, I would not shoot, you know, I would not take the chance because I don't want to injure the animal. Mm -hmm. You know, I want that thing to die as quickly as possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for... And I think that's, I don't need to solve all the, the world's problems yeah. with, with veganism, but I, I think that is a take that's not heard very often from, from that side. Um, but uh, moving away from hunting, uh, yeah. we're in Northern Texas. We go to Austin. Go to Austin. What's the career path? Like, are we still in coal? Still or? in coal. Okay. Yeah. Still in coal. Yeah. Yep having a good time in Austin really kind of found a good group of people like to hang out with out of work. Is that by grapevine or, uh, grapevines kind of by Dallas. Okay. Then that's the one. So, um, (laughs) Austin's North of San Antonio. Gotcha. Kind of South, of like Waco area. Okay. Yeah. So you find your group of friends. What what is, what is your group of friends? I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're going out, we're having fun, you know, on the weekends. Uh, you know, we're, pretty active, yeah. uh, biking, okay. uh, nice. playing volleyball, like, you know, just goofing off. Yeah. Like at, uh, I forget the name of the park, but, uh, yeah, Saturday mornings going out there playing, playing volleyball, same volleyball for a couple hours and then grabbing drinks afterwards. Just Wonderful. Super, super fun. Yeah. There was, uh, you know, a lot of people like in my stage of life at that time yeah. that I could just, you know, make friends pretty easy and mm-hmm. hang out and have a good time. Nice. What would yep. you say your physical and, and mental health were at that time? Uh, physical, I would say pretty, pretty decent. Yeah. Um, I was in shape for the most part. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, like a, a fine specimen. For, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I felt good about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, mentally, yeah, I was pretty good too. You know, I was having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. What pulls us away from Texas? So yeah, the coal, the coal industry started okay. to kind of go down. So I wanted a more, what, uh, what was the cause of that? Uh, the, uh, the clean air act. Okay. Um, so they were forcing a lot of the power plants to update their emission standards, uh, from burning coal. Um, and, um, yeah. What, what, so from, from the outside in, like my perspective on that, what was that a good move? Was it too aggressive? I don't know. It felt like for me, I, I thought it was too aggressive at, yeah. the, at the, at the, uh, at the start, you know, there was, uh, they were forcing, um, you know, regulations, um, too quickly. Okay. That was my take. Um, 
but I kind of forgot about it. I was like, you know, whatever. So I'm like, on to it, the next it, thing. it didn't seem like somebody was lobbying for something that like there didn't seem to be any shenanigans going on at that point or there wasn't uh like they weren't trying to prop up any other type of industry at the point by pushing coal down so I fast. I mean, not 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 that you heard that, of that. Not that I heard of. Okay. But, I mean, you know, I'm just kind of a peon. <laughs> just you know, I'm a coal supervisor. That's all I was. I wasn't. I wasn't. So, doing anything what else. what does a coal supervisor do? Run run a crew. Okay. Yeah. So, at that point, I had um, I had probably 60, uh, 60 people on my crew. Oh damn. Yeah, big crew. So I was doing all the pre strip operation okay so that was uh you know not extracting the coal but yeah. taking all the dirt okay out of the ground to gotcha. get it out of the way for to expose the coal okay so when you hear that's kind of winding down who do you reach out to how do you find the next recruiters job? okay yeah recruiters i mean at, at this point like you're getting calls every every week emails mm-hmm. that sort of thing hey we got a job here hey we got a job there so, yeah yeah so where did it, where did you Chicago. go to Texas? Wow. That was so Chicago. Yeah. How many years ago was that? That was in uh, 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. are you, do you live downtown Chicago? I am in Plainfield. Okay. Yeah. I moved to uh, Plainfield. I do uh, underground limestone mining. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm living in North Plainfield. Um, Is that Union? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Is that local too? Then that's um, that is uh, the laborers. I forget which local they're out of. That's too. Um, well, I, I don't think that they were. I don't. I don't think it was local too. Really, it wasn't heavy highway. It wasn't heavy highway. So um, the one hundred and fifty operators were yeah, there. Yeah, that's operators. So yeah. some of the mines were. Uh, the laborers and the 150 guys, mm-hmm. and then the uh, the last mine that I was at up in Bartlett. That's all 150. Okay, that's all 150. So, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so I did that for about two years. What's the operation look like? Uh, underground. So this one um, a little bit shallower. We're you know three four hundred foot underground. Mm-hmm. This one, uh, you know, you're driving your trucks down there really yeah so come going through a portal okay and uh getting to getting to underground um yeah early mornings on that job as well um who who are you providing the material to at that? so all your all your uh your ag plants so okay. you're making you're making three-quarter stone you're selling the stone you know whether that be for your uh, concrete plants or buying your stone to make concrete. Okay. So what part of concrete is limestone? Like, do you have to crush it up and then put it into the mixture or how does that work? Yeah. So we'll sell them, we'll sell them the base. We'll sell them the base. They'll have different uh, specifications for the sizes of material that they need in their mix. And uh, they'll make a variety of mixes, concrete mixes. So you're not bringing out just like big rocks. Then you're bringing out. They're they're buying the finished product. Okay. So they're taking, you know, whatever percentage of three quarter stone, mm-hmm. and they're adding in the sand and yeah. all the other materials to make that okay. make that concrete. But they are getting the finished product. Gotcha. So with working that job. Uh, having it being union, do you work less hours than usual or no more? The, oh. the, 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 uh, well, I, I mean, it was just a, it was a longer, longer, sh- you know, longer shifts okay. there. Texas was all union too. Really? They were all, uh, they were all electrical okay. guys, the by IBW, um, union for whatever reason. Yeah. But, yeah. So with working 10, 12 hour days or what? Uh, yeah, 12s. Okay. We're working 12s and then mm, quite a bit, you know, a couple hours more on that too. With Cole, I was, uh, you know, doing like a, a swing shift rotation. So, or a shift rotation. So, you know, you would, uh, you would only work uh, 14 days out of a 28 day month. But you're working uh, four nights in a row, and then yeah. you're off a day, and then you're coming back and working day shift, and yeah. then you're off a day, and then how you come was, back. And how work. was that on your health? Oh, it was, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. What yeah, was, it was not fun. What was your routine 
to kind of ramp up once you switch over like a, a rotation. So like coming off of, you know, working nights, Yeah. you know, during that stretch, you would get seven days off, mm-hmm. like, you know, which is great. Yeah. But like my first, you know, day, cause I would want to get back to sleeping at night. Yeah. Um, I would just stay up. Mm -hmm. I would just stay up for, you know, 20 hours or whatever. Right. And then have really good sleep. Right. At the end. (laughs) Yeah. But that was not fun. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, that's, uh, that's tough on, you know, families and, you know, you're missing a lot of family time. Mm -hmm. I was single at the time, so it really didn't affect me too much, but you could tell it took a toll on people. Oh, absolutely. So when you move up to Chicago, Obviously, we've talked probably the last 20 or so minutes on on work. What, uh, when did work not become like the sole focus like for you? Or did you have a lot of other stuff going on? Um, you know, probably when, um, oh man, I don't know. Probably when, probably when I had kids, you know, okay. really realizing like, you know, there's more to it than, mm-hmm. you know, grinding away at yeah. work. We won't send this to your boss. <laughs> it's, it's a balance. It's a yeah. balance. You know, I mean, that's, that's the reality. Mm. It takes a balance. I mean, you know, being happy and fulfilled at home, you know, translates into you doing well and, right. you know, achieving great things at work too. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you combat those things, or how do you even get a read on where those things are for for your life? Um, you know your relationships that are around you, whether mm-hmm. it be at home or at work. You yeah, know? there's times where you're gonna have to dig in and mm-hmm. put in the extra work. Um, you know whether you're at home or at the office, and just being able to communicate that to, to everybody and don't yeah. take it all on yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I had, I had to have a pretty difficult conversation when I was with the, the company I'm with now is like, you know, we were in Nebraska, um, for like two years coming off a tunnel job out there. And, you know, my wife, uh, is from the Chicagoland area and she moved out there with me and, you know, we had this plan of, you know, kind of tramping around the country for the first, you know, I don't know, six, yeah. seven years. And, um, we had our oldest and she's like, Hey, we got to get back to Chicago, yeah. you know? And, um, the company that, that I currently still work for now, you know, like I, I really enjoyed that company yeah. and being with them. I, you, you could just tell that it was a good company and uh, great people, but I had to go to my boss and be like, Hey, this is, this is the situation right. I'm in. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't want to quit this company. I don't want to go work for anybody else, but like getting back to Chicago is important for me and my family. Yeah. And here's the reasons why, you know, what can I do? Mm-hmm. You know, and they, they did end up, you know, moving me here to Chicago and, yeah. you know, so it worked out, but typically, you know, that's, um, that doesn't happen too often. Oh, I, yeah, I worked pipeline and you follow the you company follow the work because they feed, they pay, they feed yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, you follow wherever they send you. Yeah. Yeah. So having that conversation was pretty difficult, Yeah, but, um, you know, it's, it all works out. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like I was asking to get moved back to, uh, you know, middle of Kentucky. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> we're in Chicago, right. like we're going to have some construction going on in the city and, mm-hmm. and we have an area office here as well. So it okay. worked out good. So when, uh, did you find F3 and like, what was the, what was the positive or what was the need for F3? At um, that point? you know, I think, um, I found F3 in December of twenty. 20. Okay. So coming up on the anniversary, yeah, I should look into when that date was. It's probably pretty close. We'll just go ahead and claim it as tomorrow. Sold. Sound good. Okay. All right. So yeah, I was, uh, uh, my neighbor, uh, he was an F3. Okay. Um, so he was trying to get me to come out, but, um, yeah, it just kind of sounded kind of cultish and I, I kind of weird. The, I've, never seen like a hard sell or like um 
I never had anyone come up to me. I actually went up to uh, Dr. Evil and Woody and when they were doing the marking for the windmill workout yeah. or whatever it was. So like, how does someone approach you about F3? Because I feel like it's got to be tough. Yeah, I mean, it was like... <laughs> All I knew is that my neighbor didn't drink alcohol. So that was like one like strike against him <laughs> at that point in my life. I was like, I don't know, man. And then he's like, you know, it's a, you know, a workout group. I was like, okay, well that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. He's like, you know, and it's, uh, it's like kind of, you know, it's a uh, faith based. And I was like, ah, I don't know, man. You know, like, I don't know. I was like, oh, it sounds good. You know? Yeah. And, you know, when he said it was early in the morning, like I, that didn't bother me, mm -hmm. you know, just because my line of work, like I need to get up early used anyway. To get up and at yeah, yeah. So it's like no big deal, <laughs> no factor. But then, um, yeah, move into a new town, Batavia. Yeah. Didn't really know anybody. I didn't mm -hmm. have that like group of people that, right. you know, I could go to outside of work. And then, uh, yeah, one morning I was, uh, I was putting on quite a bit. I think I was probably 2 30. Okay. I was probably like two thirty. I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta get back on the bandwagon. So I gotta start jogging. Gotta start moving. Yeah. What and was? Did you look in the mirror? Did your pants start not fitting? What oh happened? yeah. I mean, all, all the above, okay. right? You know, all the above. It's just, you know, it's a slow creep, right? Mm -hmm. And but at you some wake, point, there's you like wake up and you're like, all happen. right, yeah, this is ridiculous. Okay. This is ridiculous. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta pull it back in all right where's the guy that doesn't drink let me give him did you, you give him a call no no outside? no i literally like i was just out running oh. i was out running okay. at uh Inkstrom park gotcha and um i see these guys and um like under the pavilion and then i'm thinking oh that's the group i bet my neighbor was talking about yeah and so i run by and they're like hey come on out <laughs> and so like i go up to him i'm like you know, hey, what's up? Yeah. You know, and just start. I'm like, oh, these guys look pretty normal. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and so I came back out, and then, and then I did like, I did like 50 days straight. Wow. Like, yeah, I did not stop. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was pretty active that first year. Mm -hmm. uh, was didn't really lose that much weight though. Yeah. I was still drinking. I was still eating like crap. Um. It wasn't until my first 75 hard where okay. it like really came off. Yeah. Weight came off. I got down to 185. That was my goal. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I distinctly remember seeing you at the beginning and at the end of that. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> those no, it shirts felt good. Are, those felt, shirts are a little big on you. <laughs> felt good, man. <laughs> felt good. So for you... What is what does F three represent? Because I think it's different for everyone else. Like, is it more the encouragement to get up in the morning? Like, what does it do for you? I think it just you know starts starts my day out right. Mm -hmm. You know, getting up, doing something hard, being around you know really good people. Um, you know, it's nice starting the morning out with with some faith. Yeah. Um, hearing that, being a part of it. Um, yeah, the fellowship really enjoy that mm -hmm. so um yeah i think it just kick starts my day yeah like in the right direction yeah i would say for me i've been struggling getting back to a routine and so usually i'll go to a, a crossfit gym in lyle because that's where i was working out in naperville yeah. and then uh i'll queue or something and like yeah. i'm always going to make it when i'm running the workout right but you know sometimes if my daughter wakes up eh, yeah maybe i'll tough. sleep in and i'm not going to go to the workout it's tough in lyle um how do you keep yourself from not making that happen um just doing it just <laughs> i i i try and keep it very simple <laughs> yeah. i really do like is, um, is Nike sponsoring this? Should no, just do it. <laughs> no, it's not. It's definitely not. But um, yeah, just setting a goal and mm -hmm. making it happen. You know, very very rarely do uh, do I miss some kind of you know exercise. Yeah. every day. So I I just that's probably my advice. Okay, maker. okay. <laughs> um, but the setting a goal and just knowing you're gonna do it, it's gotta feel great. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of like been my my whole you know yeah. motto like just growing up you know is it's fun doing hard stuff mm -hmm. you know 
I, I wish I wish F three I I would lead more, mm-hmm. you know, like more more cues, but um, sometimes I need a break from that too, yeah. you know, because my current current job I you know doing that a lot as well. Yeah. So maybe there'll be something for twenty twenty four. Then mm-hmm. so step as, up a little a, bit more after seventy five hard. Um, what did your diet look like then, and then what what are you kind of doing now? Um, so. My diet for 75 hard was, uh, no sugars. Okay. Um, and, um, that was good. And then obviously all the, no alcohol and all that at 70, at the end of 75 hard, I think I was at like 195. Okay. But I had a goal to get to 185. So I, I continued on, I started in January uh, the 75 hard and then I did not have a drink till july 4th wow so that's when i hit my 185 so i did the Day no sugar 76 if i ever make it that far i'd be going ham i just <clears throat> doing it with my friends yeah I, i'll i'll like i'll hit like a week solid and like i keep on they're on daylight 25 right now yeah and then like i won't do carnivore and it's like yeah i did all the other things like yeah. i'll stay in the group and support you guys right. yeah <laughs> but like you had that goal of 180 you just hit it yeah. and yeah. Kept, kept rolling with it. Yeah. No, it felt good. It felt good. And I mean, like right now, I just came off of, uh, you know, I came off a of knee surgery. So I uh, kind of did a 75 light, you know, back in October. Mm-hmm. I knew that I wouldn't be, you know, burning as much calories yeah. running and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, well, I know my body, you know, like if I'm drinking that puts on weight yeah. right uh sugars are have always been really bad to me as mm-hmm. far as carrying around weight so i better cut out the sugars and oh well, what the fuck like let's go ahead and drink <laughs> a gallon of water and <laughs> let's keep doing the workouts and yeah. let's read 10 pages a night so mm-hmm. it's like all right i just won't do the second workout yeah a day so yeah i think i only, I only took off i only took off uh i, I worked out the day of my surgery, before surgery, mm-hmm. um, I took off uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Those were the days where I just, I, you know, I was just walking around. That yeah. was it. But then Tuesday, I went went out to my first F three, and then yeah. you know, every day after that, I was doing something. Would Would you say the workouts are more beneficial for your body, or your physical health, or your mental health, or do you think it's kind of combined? I think it. I think it. Uh, I think it's all of the above. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing it for. You yeah. Know? But yeah, I mean, for me, you know, being in a community that I didn't know anybody other than you know the people that I work with, right, and my immediate family, you know, that I deal with on a daily basis, right. You know, we need some some sense of community, right? And F three just like fucking checks that box, yeah, like, <laughs> real hard. You know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. You're around a bunch of people, and um, mm-hmm. they may not be at the same stage of life that you're in, but yeah, you know, they give you advice, and you hear what they're going through, and yeah. there's definitely people that are going through similar stages, which is nice to you know chat with, and, for sure. You know, just be there for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't, absolutely. But we'll we'll finish up with the last two okay. questions. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, what's your definition of health? Not necessarily the dictionary defi- yeah. definition, but what is health to you? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's just a balance, a balance of um, you know taking care of your body, taking care of your mind, um, and um, trying to uh, make sure that you've got a healthy balance in, in your everyday life. Love that. And then what is something from your life that people listening to the podcast would be able to take away as a positive? Um, just, uh, you know, make sure I, I wish that I had, uh, set goals earlier on, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, um, my earlier stages, um, and, you know, setting that goal and executing them. Uh, it's a good, good way to live, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to succeed. So love that. Thanks yeah. so much for coming on the yeah, podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely.